again and welcome to this BERT tutorial. I'm using Google Colab this time because I want to use a free GPU. So that is why I am uh, rather using it uh, instead of uh, IPython notebook. Uh, if you remember, I told you one of the uh, things, good things about uh, BERT is that you can use a pre-trained model and then fine-tune it for your own specific uh, purpose. And in this tutorial, I will use brain, uh, BERT to train a text classifier. We will take a pre-trained BERT model and then add an untrained layers of neurons at the end and then train it for our own classific uh, classification problem. So uh, let's see what we need to do here. First of all, uh, as I said, Google Collabs offer freeze GPUs and TPUs, and since it is a large neural network, let's uh, try it <coughs> on a GPU. And what I do first, I try to uh, see if uh, uh, there is a GPU detected, and then I'm going. If if it wasn't, I would go and add one basically at top here, edit notebook setting, and then you could find it there. But it has already detected one. And I have already installed the things that I needed to install before, so I'm going to skip that. Uh, but uh, you need to do that if you haven't done that. Uh, then I'm going to import the modules that I need. So let me apparently I need to stop this thing again. Okay, and now. Okay, good. Um in order for Torch to use the GPU, we need to specify what we want, and here it goes. And then we will use uh, here the corpus of linguistic accessibility data set for single sentence classification, and it is a set of sentences labeled as grammatically correct and incorrect. And the data is as follows, column one, the code representing the source for the sentence, then whether uh, the column two says whether uh, accept, accessibility judgment labor acceptable or not, and then column three, uh, the accessibility judgment as originally noted by the author, and uh, after that, the sentence. Uh, I'm going to put the link where you can get the data, but for now I'm going to load the data here. Okay, now let's uh, save it in a panda data frame, get the shape, and see how it looks like. Yeah. Uh, what we are going to do next is uh, to add a special tokens at the beginning and at the ends of the uh, uh, each sentence of the words and also create the sentences and label lists. So I'm going to do that as well. So basically this is what we discussed before that when we are doing BERT we are going to add the tokens for CLS and SEP. And then we import the BERT tokenizer here and convert our text into tokens that corresponds to BERT's vocabulary. So here is an example, as you see here. 
uh, BERT requires a specifically formatted inputs. For each tokenized input sentence, we need to create input IDs, segment masks that is optional, uh, and that is a sequence of zeros and ones. So identify whether the input is one sentence or two sentence long. If it is one sentence, it is zero. Two sentence, there is a zero for each token at, uh, of the first sentence followed by a one for each token of the second sentence. The attention mask, a sequence of one and zeros again, with ones for all input tokens and zeros for all padding tokens. And then labels, a uh, single value one or zero, one grammatical, zero non-grammatical. Although we can have a variable length input sentences, BERT does require us to uh, have the input arrays of the same size. And first, what we do is choose a maximum sentence length and then padding, truncating our input until every input sent sentence has the same length. And to pad, uh, basically, uh, if the sentence is short, at the shorter than the maximum length, then we simply add zeros at the end. And if it is longer, then we basically cut the end of the sentences and discard anything that does not fit into our maximum lengths. And we pad and truncate our sentences so that they all become of the maximum lengths that we have. So let's do it here. Uh, here, the, the longest sentences that we had was 47, but uh, we take it a bit longer. Okay, so let's then use the bare tokenizers and then pat the, the input tokens, create the attention masks, create masks of ones for each tokens and zeros. And so this is a, a sort of our uh, pre-processing of the data. What uh, we need to do next uh, is to uh, divide our, like we, what we always do, train our data into training and testing data set. And then to the data type that required is for this model. Batch for training. And then create an iterator that our data uh, with a Torch data loader. And this is basically to save the memory during the training. And what we are doing here is basically we are using the uh, BERT based uncased uh, and uh, this is a pre-trained model. And what we are doing after this is actually the real thing that we are going to do is to uh, do the fine tuning to, uh, to fit to our uh, specific context here. Uh, and, and we need to keep in mind that for this task, we want to modify the pre-trained BERT model to give outputs for classification. And then we can continue training the model on our data set until that the entire model end-to-end -end is well suited for our task. And this is easy by doing the hugging face PyTorch. So let's see how we do it here. I'm still loading this thing. Yeah, it is done. So we load the BERT for sequence classification, and this is the normal BERT model uh, with an added single uh, layer, uh, linear layer at top of the classification that we use as a sentence classifier. And as we feed input data, the entire pre-trained BERT model and the additional untrained classification layer is trained on our specific task. As uh, you have seen before, uh, as we have seen before, uh, the first token of every sequence is a special classification token CLS. And unlike the hidden state vector corresponding to a normal word token, the hidden 
a state corresponding to this special token is designated by the authors of BERT as an aggregate representation of the whole sentence used as a classification task. Okay, so now that this is loaded, uh, we have our uh, model loaded, we need to grab the training hyperparameters from within the stored model and the purpose of a fine tuning, uh, we follow the, uh, the following uh, size uh, recommendations, batch size 16, 32, learning rate and the number of epochs and I'm going to put them in. Okay, I am going to let this run and then I'm going to explain to you, it will take a bit of time. I'm going to explain to you what uh, is happening in the training loop. Uh, there are many things going on, but uh, the basic idea is that in the training loop, we tell the model to compute the gradients by setting the model in the train mode. Then unpack our data into inputs and label then we load the data onto the GPU for acceleration, then clear out the gradients calculated in the previous pass, and in PyTorch, uh, I know that we really haven't worked with PyTorch in this course, but it was needed for BERT, so if this is something that you're not comfortable with, you can simply skip it. It was just, uh, I may even put it as optional, the whole BERT thing. But if you're interested uh, and if you know PyTorch or you can get an understanding, then this is cool. Uh, and as, as I was saying, in the Py, in PyTorch, the gradients accumulated by default unless you explicitly clear them out. And then there is a forward pass. Basically, what it does is to feed the input data through the network and the familiar backpropagation, which is called the backward pass as well. And after that, we tell the network to update the parameter with optimizer step and then track variables for uh, variables for monitoring progress. And after that, there comes the evaluation loop. And this is where we tell the model not to compute the gradients by setting the model in evaluation mode, um, mode unpack our data inputs and label, then load data onto GPU uh, forward pass, and then we compute our loss uh, on validation data and track the variables for monitoring progress. So let's see how much is left. Well, it is pretty much at the beginning. So I'm going to pause this and I'm going to get back to you when it... Hmm. Okay. Now, uh, as you see, the training is done and the validation accuracy is like 81%. Now let's have a look at training loss over several batches. Yeah. Uh, as you see, it, it's, it's quite well. It has come down. What we want to do right now is to load the holdout data set and uh, prepare the input again as we did with the training data set and then we evaluate uh, the prediction using Matthew's correlation uh, uh, co uh, correlation coefficient because this is a metric used by the wider NLP uh, community. So uh, and in this metric plus one is the best and minus one is the worst possible score. So let's see how we performed. Now first I do the evaluation, uh, the loading the data set and pre preparing it. Then let's see. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, the final score will be based on the entire test set but let's uh, have a look at the individual badges as well. So this is over the individual badges. So they, they are relatively fine, some of them are not. Well, I mean, they're mainly over 0.5, so. 
let's have a look at the total score it could have been uh, better but it is quite good for now as well you can do the training again and again and uh, do the hyperparameter tuning to get a better score but it is already a good score that we have here and by that I wrap up this uh, this handsome practice and wish you good luck with your mini project too